Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. The King of Glory, celebrate him. Jesus, the Lord of Lords, celebrate him. Yes, we lift up the name. I am that I am, celebrate him. We celebrate you, Jesus. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him more, give him more, give him more, give him more. Hallelujah. Give him more praise. Up to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Your holy name. To Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. I said to Jesus. Exalted King. The Lord of Lords. To Jesus. Glory. The King of Glory. To Jesus. The mighty great I am. Woo. Jesus. What's the Awesome Savior. Our God is a good God. Amen. Today we celebrate him for who he is. Amen. For everything that he has done for us. Amen. We stand to say Ebenezer. Ebenezer. For this far the Lord has kept us. Oh, yes. His word is indeed true. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I shall be with you every day till the end of time. Hallelujah. And he kept his word. And we know if God brought us this far, mm. he will take us where he say we will get. Oh, we yes. will save it. May I prophesy over your life today. I decree and I declare in this season, you will testify I the goodness will of God. Him. I decree and I declare you will not go by without your miracle. You will Amen. testify Amen. in the name of Jesus. I Somebody holler, I will testify. I will testify. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Find a few neighbors and give them a high five, prophetic high five. God is doing it. Glory to Jesus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a good day. God will manifest his goodness to you do your good. Amen. I promise you something good will happen to all of us. We will God bless you. Please have a seat if you can. I want to take you through the announcement and we will go through. Hallelujah. Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are in the overflow, by the grace of God, I will come to the overflow and pray with you. Those who are in the extension, wherever you are, may God manifest his goodness. That you bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you are watching us live from wherever you may be around the world, we welcome you. We pray the blessings of God upon you. May my God do something unusual with you today. I am speaking prophetically that the heavens may open and that God may release a deposit into your life that will change you completely I today i seal that miracle over your life Amen. in jesus name. now i greet you those who are part of ami and streaming live in angola namibia in dr kinshasa i am feeling in my spirit that i have to include our branches into this service our branches that are not uh, 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 necessarily here, but are streaming live. Uh, I want to pray with you. I want to stretch my hands. I want to declare words over you. And if I will have a privilege through the media to be able to see you, we will I have a good time in the Holy Ghost. The hand of God is not short to touch. Amen. The eyes of God is not limited by a place. Amen. I can see you where you are. Ooh. Right there. Right yes. there. Jesus. Obviously, I can't see you with uh, my naked eyes, 
I can see you with uh, the eyes that we all have. I'm a spirit. Oh, yeah. And I can see you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We will be having our AL Partners meeting. The AL Partners is a group of men and women who have taken it upon themselves to hold my hand as uh, you and Aaron kept the hands of Moses on the mountain high so that a victory may be given and that do so with the finances. They have been running this race with me for the past six months as uh, that is the opportunity we have to do so for six months and renew it because we did not want to put a burden on you that uh, you will not know how to get out of. That's why we say your commitment should be for six months. And uh, should you wish to continue with uh, supporting us financially and standing specially with me financially, you'll be given that opportunity because I want you to do it with your heart. Family serving God costs a lot of money. I tell you, unbelievable. It costs huge money to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and that no one can do it alone. Are you hearing me? So those men and women have uh, dedicated, some of them do so with uh, about $800 per month for the six, past six months they've been doing that. That is 10,000 rand, if I'm correct. And the others is 15,000 rand. That will be about uh, $1,200, 1,200 or 1,300. And that there are those who have been doing it with 30,000 rand which is close to $2,500 for the past six months, every month they did that. So this Wednesday, we will have a dinner, as we've been having in the past six months, we had a number of dinners together, where we come together, uh, fellowship and build each other, he hearing testimonies. We will have a dinner this Wednesday. It's not open to the public, it's only for the AL partners. Oh, That's yeah. why the venue is never uh, 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 announced. Because you get a call for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And on Sunday, this coming Sunday, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, launch the, the wall that we have on the basement, not the basement, the reception. That wall that you see there, it's written covenant wall. In that, we will put photos of men and women who have been standing with your Moses on the mountain hill. You must know that whatever they're doing, they're entering into the work of your Moses for you. So, as they keep my hands up in covenant, you will see the photos there. It is my prayer that as you pass, you check the photos, not to check who's who in the jungle, but rather to pray and appreciate them. Yes. But this is a memorial that we are lifting before God. I want you to get ready because that Sunday, I will try as much as I can to give, uh, to invite as many of you who would like to join us for the next session of um, the next journey of the AL partners. It must be your cry. Oh God, I want you to bless me. I want you to heal me. I want, but I also want to bless back. Mm. I want you to use me as an instrument for the kingdom of God. It, it must be a great honor that you serve God with what you have. And remember, those who are doing it, they're not doing it because they have so much. They do it because they love God that much. Amen. Are you hearing me? Please, help me preach the gospel. You may be far. I pray that uh, you may join me. And uh, what is really interesting and very uh, uh, a great joy to me, the AL partners, I have more AL partners who are, are overseas than I have here in South Africa physically. So I, I want to thank you from around the world, those of you who have joined the AL partners and have been faithful till now. I want as many as possible Come and connect with me. Let's do this together. And Jesus will be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the crossing over is coming. The crossing over, it is that gate of time for the year where we move from one year to another. The crossing over, the 31st of December till the 1st of January. We will have a crossing over service here that night. Many times in the past, you used to cross from one year to another with a bottle of beer or whiskey in your hand. You know, hallucinating whether you are inside the house or outside the house. You do not know anything. You just, in the, not Holy Ghost, but under the influence. 
But this time, I invite you to cross to 2019 on your knees in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord had told me that we should have an IVP on the crossover. This IVP starts on Sunday, the 30th of uh, December, and it will run down till the first Tuesday, the 1st of um, 2019. So you'll see, we'll begin this uh, uh, IVP in one year and finish in another year. Yes. What, what is specific with this crossover, this IVP, is God vividly spoke to me that I should prepare you. I should anoint you and lay hands on you for 2019. Now I explain, this may be because of two things. One, it may be because there might be battles in 2019 that you do not know of. And God want to prepare you so you may have victory. Because it is the will of God that you may always win. Are you Amen. hearing me? Amen. So, he wants me to prepare you for what is ahead. That I may anoint you and lay hands on you. Now, if it is so that God wants you to be prepared because of the Goliath that you face, please, by all means, break yourself in pieces if you have to. Be here. Leave Jamaica alone. Come here. Leave Trinidad alone. Come here. Leave Kuwait. Leave Saudi Arabia. Come here. Leave India. Come here. Be prepared so that when the year comes, no devil may resist you. That's right. Are you hearing me? Yes. The second reason God may want me to pray for you is because he wants this year that is coming to be a year where everything that he has spoken about and more may manifest. A year where you will see increase, a year of overflow. Are you hearing me? Amen. So I want to invite as many of you as possible to please register. We have forms with uh, uh, ushers and so forth. You can register to become, to be part and part of the IVP. Make sure that, that today you register to be part and parcel of the IVP. I want you to watch the screen for an advert. A divine opportunity has once again been afforded us all to gather together in our most significant international visitors program yet with Pastor Alf Lukau. Well, beloved, this is Pastor Alf Lukau. We're excited to invite you to our upcoming IVP. From Sunday, the 30th of December, we will be all together under the cloud of the glory of God. Till the 1st of January 2019, the Lord had vividly spoken to me that I shall anoint you and lay hands on you for 2019. It is true that God will never call a meeting and not show up. As admonished by God himself, Pastor Alf Lukau will anoint every man, every woman, from every nation with a special oil. Through the laying on of hands, many who came to Alleluia Ministries International, afflicted in their mortal bodies, were completely healed. Under the power of God, by the hands of his apostle, God has brought the dead back to life restored the missing uterus of women trusting God for a child amongst countless other miracles. That which you have witnessed and experienced before is nothing compared to the glory and power that will be seen during this coming program aimed at preparing you for a fruitful 2019. While well, only God knows what is waiting for you and me in 2019, the instruction of God is clear that I should anoint you and lay hands on you. I believe God has a plan for you. God want to do something greater than what you have seen so far. I want to invite you to please register with us. Come and be my personal guest for this IVP. I want to have a privilege of holding you to your next level. As God has instructed, I believe in my heart that something great, something big, something huge is waiting for you in this coming year. Your 2019 will begin with an uncommon grace for success. Come and drink from this well of power and be quenched. You will be positioned to receive a fresh anointing of acceleration in your career, your finances, your business, and in your family. No more limitation, no more struggle, no more sickness. 
you will indeed be a walking testimony of the goodness of the Lord. After the man of God has laid hands on your head and anointed you, you will walk under an open heaven and experience great favor. Trust God in this and watch Him elevate you into a different dimension of grace. Join Pastor Alf Lucau from the 30th of December to the 1st of January 2019 for an intimate experience in the Holy Ghost. To register, log on to www.alleluiaministries.com and ensure that you call the numbers on your screen for more inquiries. Please register now. The seats are limited. And I promise you, your life will never, ever be the same again. I am Af Lukau, and I approve this message. Family, see you there. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, after seeing this, hearing of this, you still don't register something wrong with you. I promise you, after hearing what I'm saying to you and seeing this, you still don't come. You, something is seriously wrong with you. I will lock myself again in prayer. Maybe I'm not praying enough. I need to pray for you. I need to rescue you from that spirit that allows you in moment where you hear God clearly calling you, you still sit and you expect victory. Lift your hand. Say every devil. Every devil. That is meant to confuse my mind. That is meant to confuse my mind. To stop me from my miracle. To stop me from my miracle. Even when God clearly calls me for it. Even when God clearly calls me for live it. Live my life. Live my life. Never return. Never return. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Say I will go to the IVP. I will go to the IVP. I hope you didn't lie. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we, we, we had a moment. We had a, somebody take care of uh, no destruction. We had a moment um, on Friday that I had presented to you saying that we have a situation with... Um, one of my precious daughter, one I love dearly, the wife of uh, my precious son, Bishop Mike Songiso, who went to be with the Lord. And I've explained that uh, her departure was uh, timely. It was in the plan of God. I have no reason to believe otherwise because God had informed us of her departure. She served God with everything she had. And uh, we, in pain of separation, we're grieving the pain, but we are hopeful. So we celebrate God for our life. I'm talking about my precious daughter, Pastor Nata Songiso, who has been serving God in Alleluia Ministries, Namibia. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be having a program that I want to just present to you. Um, details of uh, what I had to say about what happened was said on Friday. As I speak, a few of our bishops are already in Namibia. They are there to strengthen the church. And I love you, Namibia. We are together. And we thank God for what he has done. Amen. We must know that at the coming and the going of people, we cannot stop. No matter how hard we pray, the coming and the going of people, it is a set. But it is important for us to know that in God, the Lord will not allow you to go before your time. I stretch my hand and I pray for you. You will not leave, depart before your time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Family, for a child of God, death is a promotion. It's not a punishment. It is a promotion. And every day of your life, you must prepare yourself. Do things thinking of life after life. How will you live beyond this life? In this life, you drive well. You dress well. But uh, what will be of you after this life? It is very important. The program will be as follow. In Namibia, there will be a celebration week of glory. Remembering my precious daughter who served God. It will start Monday till Thursday. And uh, we have a great number of uh, uh, worshippers that will be there. My precious son Ruben is uh, flying tomorrow. 
there is uh, Vincent that is flying tomorrow. There is uh, Brother Bongani Shang that is going tomorrow. We have uh, Kings, uh, gospel singer Kings from Zambia that will also be going there. We have uh, uh, Pastor Clive from Namibia that will be there. We have the MV6 a cappella groups. We have uh, my daughter Shilo and uh, uh, Angola that will be going there and just to praise and worship. We'll spend time of pure celebration. We're bringing heaven down Hallelujah. in Namibia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we will also have um, on I think the 30th, the, the 30th on Friday, will I have a farewell. That will be a memorial service. The venue will be communicated, but uh, from here, will I have a, a number of us who wish to go that register here. There will be pastors that uh, will take people there. So if you want to go there and be part and parcel of what God is doing there, you know, uh, saying bye, you know, and uh, sharing that intimate moment with the church, with the family, you'll be welcome to go from here. That will be for the memorial service that will take place on Friday and the burial will be on Saturday. You know, I, I believe, this is my personal belief, uh, a servant of God, especially in AMI, uh, is not just like a minister. If you serve God, you're not just a minister. You are worthy of double honor, as the word says, I have spoken that uh, for my daughter's funeral, she will have nothing but a top presidential stand out or Glory send off. To Jesus. Generally, I don't like mediocrity, but uh, here I feel a spirit of exaggeration in uh, appreciation. Are you hearing me? Now, saying this does not mean anything. My, my spiritual parent leaving this earth, they had explicitly asked that uh, we should not do too much. The coffin was covered. It was literally wood, no more wood, and uh, that was the, the coffin, both for my father in the Lord and my mother in the Lord. They say, no tombstone, no nothing. Bury us and forget, and we move on. That is my spiritual father and my spiritual mother. You know, because you see, the, cho the choosing of life, you do not, someone want to drive a Rolls Royce, another one a Beetle, don't compare the two. Accept them the way they are. Are you hearing me? One likes preaching on the gene. The other one want to put a three-piece. Are you hearing me? Accept the gene guy and the three-piece guy the same. Are you hearing it? One preach with an ugly microphone. Another one with a, a hey. nice one. Hey. Don't be jealous now. Power levels. <laughs> I'm just showing off. When God shows up, it's too okay, much. it's a joke. Now, whatever it is, you accept them as they are. Now, for my daughter, nothing but royal and presidential. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to please stand up as we prepare ourselves to the word and pray. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to know that He's here and that today God will do awesome things. Today I am praying that the grace and the glory of God come in your life as not seen before in the name of jesus he said i will not leave you nor forsake you i shall be with you every day till the end of time is god that is his name god with us Yeah. 
Emmanuel. God is with us. Your name is God, Emmanuel. We honor you. We bless you. Have your way today. Do us good. Bless each one of us. In Jesus' name. Robo Soyo Gosha. Amen. Hallelujah. Please have a seat. God bless you. I read with you from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 18, 19, and 20. First book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 18, 19, and 20. At the count of three, let's read together. One, two, and three. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last week I began to share with you a thought in comparison, not to try to undermine one level of ministry to, in favor of the other. I spoke to you of the easy and difficult ministries, that nuance is important because it is my idea and my God-given assignment to lead the church to a more practical level where God is not just a theory but God is real in our lives. Amen. Jesus Christ spoke about ministry and say which one is the easiest? There he was clearly saying that there are levels that are difficult than others. Here, remaining in that same thought, I present to you what Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. He said to them, some of you, now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you. As he's addressing them, he's addressing a specific thing. He's confronting a matter as if the church was uh, uh, under threat. There was a group of people that he had to confront. There was a, 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 a seed in the church that was against what he was doing. So he decided to confront it. He said, now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you. If you read the scripture, you will agree with me that it seems like the group that was puffed up, the group is referring to, were standing against him personally. That's why he say, they are doing so as if I was not to come myself. He say, but I will come to you. If it is the will of God. And he said, and I will know. Not the word of those who are puffed up. But the power. I'm trying to break it down. So you may get the understanding. Behind what God is trying to achieve. There is a group in the church. Of Corinth. Who are so big by themselves. That are literally rejecting the authority. Of the set men. The authority of the visionary. The authority of the apostle. They came with a different version of how things should be done. They had undermined his work, undermined his operation, and undermined his stand in God. They have painted him with a color that's supposed not to be. So he decided to confront those people. He said, some of you are puffed up. Now, the word to puff up puffed up here, it meant that some of you are boasting. Some of you are full of pride. Some of you are full of themselves. And what is interesting with the word to be puffed up here, it refers directly to somebody who is swollen. You are not big because you are healthy. You are swollen. You know, there are, there are people who you look at his size, is huge. But it's not huge healthy. It's huge sick. Mm -hmm. Well, he's now addressing this kind of people. He said, some of you are puffed up. Have you ever seen somebody normally who's supposed to be walking like you and I, but because of what is going through his mind and his heart is full of himself, he moves with his shoulders uh, 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 
competing height with the head. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen? I don't know, but there, there are people like that. So such people are the people he is trying to confront. He says, some of you are puffed up as if I will not come. But he said, I will come to you if it is the will of God. And when I come, I do not want to know your words. I want to know your power. Yes, and verse 20, he said, because the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but it is a matter of power. Mm -hmm. uh, may I please remain, remind somebody out there who's still uh, swimming in the pool of confusion, trying to figure out whether the power of God demonstrated in the church of God is the will of God or not. Let me tell you, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but a matter of power. The sooner you get it, the better. The kingdom of God is not in mere saying, but it is in the doing of God through the power of the Holy Ghost. And he say, if you have to be somebody, if you have to be big, it should not be because you have a lot to say. There are many people who have a lot to say, but nothing to show. Oh God. I, I'm trying to release the truth because the truth sets you free. Amen. There are many who have a lot to say, but they have very little to show. And he began to address them. He said, some of you are puffed up. You seem to know it all. You seem to know what is good, what is bad. You seem to correct everybody out there. You seem to look at my ministry, Paul, and say, oh, well, Paul here is not doing it as he's supposed to do. Paul's supposed to do, you know everything, but when I look at you, I see nothing. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. It, it is shocking that uh, when, when a container carries nothing, it makes more noise. It has been proven. A broke man in a relationship is always possessive. Mm -hmm. The degree of jealousy when you are broke in a relationship is high because insecurity creeps in you. Are you hearing me? Am I speaking? Are you listening? Amen. So Paul said that... Uh, a number of people in this yard, in this garden of the Lord, are puffed up. They are swollen. They are big by themselves. They walk in a certain manner. To them, they are little angels. And everybody they come across is a little devil. They feel like they have the keys of the truth. And whoever wants to have the truth must go through them. They feel that they have been positioned somehow by who we don't know to know who's right, who's wrong. They are positioning themselves as principalities. They say this one we should not go to and that this one we should go to. This one we should accept and this one we should not accept. To their own understanding, what they know is all that there is to know. If you know something that uh, they do not know, therefore, you are not aligned. They are puffed up. They feel secure in their shoes. They feel very big. Some have given themselves big names. Evangelist, pastor, like me. Apostles, bishops, archbishop, great bishops. General bishops, prophetic, whatever. Because you see, they, they are big. You don't just greet them. You got to stay away and greet them in a certain manner. They have no time to embrace you. Because you see, they are big. But you see, all this that they are seeing and feeling, it's all happening in the little cabeza, meaning the head they have. That's right. In the real world, they are not that. And now Paul said, I will come to you. What I love with Paul is the apostolic ability to confront matters. Right. An apostle does not retrieve from battle. Amen. 
an apostle does not retrieve. It keeps on moving forward. An apostle understands that you will never overcome it unless you confront it. That's right. An apostle is not easily uh, intimidated. Lift your hand and say, I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be intimidated. I love this side of Paul. He said, I will come to you. I will come to you. This brings to me the, the memory of what I read. In the book of Kings, that there was a man called Elijah. He was also in the same scenario. And he said, I will come to you. He said, bring the prophet of Baal and the Shira. Let us meet in Mount Carmel and I will go there. It's the same spirit that confronts wrong. He said, I will come to you. And I will not come to check your degrees. I will not come to check whether you said it or not. I don't want to know what you're saying. I want to see what is there. He said, I'll come to you and I will know. Not the word of those who are puffed up. Now, I need to open a quick bracket and explain that the word is referring to here. It's not the word of God only. It's referring to the opinions of man linked to the word of God. Because the word of God is power. And when we talk about the demonstration of power, we are in fact talking about the word becoming flesh. Are you hearing me? So here is people who speak a lot but show nothing. Me, I could. I could preach better than him. If I was him, I would have done. So that is what is really trying to deal with. The battle here is not between the word of God and the spirit of God because the word of God is Jesus Christ and the spirit of God is God. Are you hearing me? There, there is no battle or conflict in the Godhead. But I hear he's dealing with something. He said, I will come and confront the words of those who are speaking. I see people out there. You have achieved so far zero. You have very little to show. But you want to teach those who are far than you the ABC. Mm. Are you hearing me? I see somebody out there attacking the other one, be it in the church, in the business world, or in life, and finding fault. I am saying if this is true that you have so much knowledge, why is it not working for you? That's right. That's right. Hear me. Do not be so naive to accept anything that comes with the religious mind is that maybe it is God. Sometimes and most of the time, it's not God. How do you know it's God? The Bible says you shall know them by the their fruit. fruits. Look at result. You a married woman for crying out loud. You have a conflict in your home. You are going to a single person who cannot even maintain a boyfriend to give you advice. How does it work? Mm. Oh, well, God can speak to him. No! That's right. Wisdom is a principal thing. Amen. I'm not saying that uh, if somebody is single, he has no wisdom. But I'm saying you must align yourself and know your terrain. That's right. The secret of always winning and never losing the, the battle is in choosing well your battles. You got to be wise. Somebody who has no idea of an investment, he does not even know how to spell budget. Is the person that will advise you in your business endeavors. I cast that devil out of you. Amen. Show me your fruits. For many, you cannot argue with result. Are you hearing me? Amen. If you are who you say you are, can I see it? Is there anything to be seen? I'm looking. That's right. Did you hide it? Or oh, there is nothing? He said, I will come. And all I want to know is power. Not power. Simple, mere words. Family, be focused in showing result. Be result-minded. In everything you do, be result-minded. As a spouse, as a child, 
as a student, as an employee, as a business person. Because you see, the dignity of a man is in his work, the work that produces fruit. If you have no fruit, you have nothing to stand on. Fight for it. Stop at nothing. He said, when I come, I will not check in the Holy Ghost. I will check in the flesh. I will check to see what is your result. If indeed God is your God, where is he in your life? Don't be comforted by the fact that uh, well, I have memorized a number of verses. It's not enough. Where is God in your life? Amen. Seek him. He's here for you. Move your faith. Push yourself beyond the limit. Remove obstacles. Say, I want to see you in my life. Are you hearing me? John Knox prayed and he said, Lord, give me England or I die. He was fruit and result driven. He said, Lord, give me England or I die. This should be what moves you. What's your fruit in life? Beloved, don't say yes, I do just to anybody. Check well. That's right. Some yes, I do kills. You will not eat that six pack. He said, I will come and I want to know not the words of those who are puffed up, but power. And he explained and said, because the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. There are people who are champion talkers. They talk about everything. They know everything. You don't know that they know about you. They know everything. They talk about everything every day to everybody. He said, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. The kingdom of God, his message is, is about power. That's right. Somebody help me say power. Power. Say again, power. Power. The kingdom of God is not in word. The kingdom of God is in power. Now, I see two things that he's trying to push in. And those are two things that I want to share with you very quickly. The first one, in his uh, speaking, I can hear Paul clearly say that the kingdom of God is only established through the demonstration of the power of God. Now, I want you to understand it. The kingdom of God is the system of God. The kingdom of God is not a specific church. The kingdom of God is not a geographic place. Is the way God operates, the system of God. And he said, This system is only established through the demonstration of the power of God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Again, I say, The kingdom of God, the system of God, the operation of God is only established through the demonstration of the power of God. You can, through the power of God, establish the kingdom of God anyway. In Saudi Arabia, with the demonstration of the power of God, you will establish the kingdom of God. In any country, in any geographic place where people heard about Christ or did not hear about him. If you go with the demonstration of the power of God, the kingdom of God will be established. The kingdom of God cannot be established through mere words. Oh, well, there is a man who was a good man and he did this and he did that. That would not help. You need a demonstration of the power of God. I want you to lift your hand and I want you to say, Lord, Lord, give me power. Give me power. While you keep your hands up, please understand. Words that cannot be demonstrated shall never be trusted. Mm. I say it aside. Words that cannot be demonstrated cannot be trusted. You should not rely on things that cannot be proven. In the court of law, if you make an allegation, you must back it up. And okay. if you do not back it up, it falls away. Words that cannot be demonstrated, cannot be trusted. You can speak from morning till evening. If you say that your God heals 
And he has never healed. We cannot trust you in that word. Right. Are you hearing me? Amen. Words that cannot be demonstrated cannot be trusted. trusted. Lift your hand and say, Lord. Lord. Bring in my life. Bring in my life. The demonstration. The demonstration. Of your power. Of your power. May words. May words. Become flesh. Become flesh. So that the kingdom may be established. So that the kingdom may be established. Now put your hands together. You will notice. Hallelujah. You will quickly notice in the body of Christ that every time you start standing to demonstrate the glory of God. To trust God. To exercise your personal faith. That his word may come to pass. The devil gets annoyed. Before that, he doesn't mind you. Why? Because as soon as you begin to exercise your faith so that what is written may come to pass, you are establishing the kingdom of God. Meaning this, mm -hmm. you are destroying his kingdom. Right. The kingdom of God can only be established as the kingdom of the devil is being destroyed. When light comes, darkness leaves. That's why those who trust God, those who operate in power, they will always be controversial. Not because they are controversial. It's simply because some wicked devils are really upset. I tell you, for instance, this I say with humility. I mess up the devil so bad that there is no way he likes me. The devil hates me. He has nothing good to say about me. I have nothing good to say about him. My relationship with him is a hate-hate relationship. I don't like him. I hate him. He doesn't like me. He hates me. But I have advantage. I told him, devil, everywhere I find you, I'll kick you so hard. That's right. Glory to Jesus. Through the demonstration of the power of God, we are here not referring to people in the assemblies of the believer getting too energetic, excited, and screaming and jumping. How a church powerful? What happened? I don't know. We were all jumping. Jumping does not symbolize the power of God in the place. Mm. Oftentimes, we feel when we are loud, we are more powerful. It is not always that. There are people, when they are filled of power, you can sense it in the physical because they have energy. But let me tell you, it does not translate to, if I am loud, I automatically flow in power. Power in the natural realm is visible on many evidence, such as you screaming and jumping and so forth in the church. And that is not bad. But the power I'm talking about here has nothing to do with uh, natural power. I'm talking about spiritual power. And spiritual power is not acquired with money. It comes from God. That's why I say that uh, when the Spirit of God, you will receive power when the Spirit of God comes upon you. It is only as the Spirit of God comes upon us that we are able to flow in power. Let me tell you, once the power of God comes on you and you begin to flow in that power, healing, deliverance will take place. Breakthrough will take place. The enemy will never ever be able to resist you anymore. You will be elevated from the natural to the supernatural and your area of your operation will not be in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm. Amen. I was making a transition between being full-time in my businesses and full-time in the kingdom of God. As we began ministry, I was between the two. And I had many different offices. Every time we have a business interest, I would have a, an office there. So I had to close.